Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Regames Vidicom video, we're going to be continuing our Ryzen 2000 series coverage. This video will focus on the impact of memory speeds on the performance in various games and applications. Now, of course, with the Ryzen 2000 series processors, there were a myriad of different tweaks that AMD has put together in the processor to improve it over the original Ryzen series. This, this includes, but not limited to, improvements in cache latency, uh, memory bandwidth controller improvements, and of course, other things such as higher clock speeds and the reduction down to a 12nm process. But with that said, there is still a very simple question. With the improvements on cache latency and that type of thing, is there still a need for really fast memory? Does having, let's say, 3266 megahertz have a large benefit over, say, 2800 megahertz? Well, by the end of this video, you're certainly gonna get a good understanding of that. So with that said, let's talk about the system setup. It's very simple. We have a Ryzen 7 2700X, which is locked across all cores at 4.075 gigahertz. The reason we chose this speed is because we noticed it was the average uh, speed that the CPU was turboing when we were running other tests. Therefore, to take a random factors such as, you know, heat and that type of thing out of the equation, we've just locked it down to 4.075 gigahertz, so that the only different factor is, of course, the memory speed. We're also pairing this with an MSI X470 Gaming Plus motherboard. Uh, by the way, thanks to MSI for providing both the 2700X and the X470 motherboard. This is not a sponsored video, but I do want to give them a shout out for uh, providing these samples for a full review, which is also coming along with some other coverage over the next several days. We're pairing that uh, with a GTX 1080. By the way, all games are running at 1080p to, of course, take the graphics card out of the equation. A fully updated version of Windows uh, 10. And finally, uh, Crucial Ballistics memory running at different speeds. So we are running at 2133, 2400, 2800, and 3266 megahertz. And of course, memory timings are left identical throughout all of the different tests. So once again, the only difference here is the pure clock speed on the processor. Well, with that said, let's just start. We're going to start things out with a series of synthetic results before going on to gaming performance, with Corona being first of the pack. Right off the bat, you can see that 2133 MHz up to 2400 MHz, along with every other step along the memory clock speed rung, does definitely bring a couple of seconds improvement in performance. Just to clarify, this is time to completion, where lower is of course better with 12 seconds difference between 3266 and 2133. Is this an anomaly then? No, Frybench, another application which is time to complete, once again, slower uh, results would be the benchmarks which take longer to complete, shows a 17 second difference between 3266 and 2133. So far, it is looking like, despite the fact that memory bandwidth across the chip itself has improved with faster caches, memory clock speed for the actual system RAM is still very important. And if we move to Geekbench 4, things become even more interesting. The fastest result, 3266 MHz RAM, produces a multi-core score, or multi-thread more specifically, of 28,920, with the slowest memory, 2133 MHz, producing 26,711. So that's about 8% difference. What may surprise many of you though is the actual difference memory speed makes in single thread performance, with 4,555 being the slowest result up to 4,901 for the fastest result. Or to put it into a different way, about 7.5% difference in speed. When we move over to gaming benchmarks, we'll see that yes, even if you are only pushing one or two threads really hard, pure memory bandwidth can still make an awful lot of difference. Cinebench R15, however, is a little bit of an anomaly, and in our testing at least, was not particularly sensitive to memory bandwidth speeds. The only result we managed to get consistently was of the RAM running at 3266 MHz, where it would always get a result north of 1850. The slower memory speeds are certainly within the margin of error. 
So if you're running Cinebench all day long and that's your favourite hobby, as long as you're running memory of, let's say, over 2400 MHz, you're probably going to be in the clear. Okay, enough of synthetic testing. What about actually games themselves? Well, one of my favourite benchmarks is actually Batman Arkham Knight. Yes, the PC version had uh, numerous problems on launch, but they have been subsequently patched, and I find that this is really good for CPU testing. The other benefit as well is it actually looks quite visually nice. But anyway, uh, 3266 megahertz gets us 145 frames a second, with 2133 megahertz producing a paltry 131 frames a second. Batman Arkham Knight, don't forget, is a DX11 game. And unless you thought this was an anomaly, Far Cry Primal, running at ultra settings, is very similar. We see 3266 MHz receiving 103 frames a second, and the 2133 MHz memory setting just bringing up 87 frames a second. We can start noticing a pattern here already. If you're running the really low memory speed of 2133 MHz, which of course I wouldn't advise anyone to do who is upgrading to a Ryzen 2000 series system, you are certainly going to be receiving the lowest performance possible. And honestly, I would really question the logic of getting the 2700X with this particular processor. But certainly if you've got an older memory kit and you're saving your pennies, then I can kind of see it in the short term. But ultimately... The biggest jump is from the 2133 and 2400 megahertz to around the mid 2000 speed. So around the 2800 megahertz is where you start to notice the CPU start to distance itself in terms of the results. We also have one more anomaly with Shadow of War. But this time, a completely reverse situation where memory speeds don't seem to make that much of a difference. We suspect that the graphical settings here were really the culprit. And if we had lowered the levels of detail a little more, then certainly you would have started to see memory speeds become more of a factor. So what we're probably looking at here is the GTX 1080 boosting to different core clocks. The reason I didn't lower the level of detail with Shadow of War, however, is I did want to point out that in some games, if you are GPU bound, then honestly, memory clock speeds don't make necessarily that much of a big difference. Yes, we could have lowered the level of detail with Shadow of War and certainly investigated this point a little further, but then I wouldn't really imagine it would be a realistic scenario for most of you. After all, if you're getting around 100 frames a second in a game, you're most likely not going to lower level of detail unless it's a competitive online experience. And now on to Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is running in DirectX 12 mode with high settings. 16 frames per second separates the 3266 MHz from the 2133 MHz. Curiously, there's not much of a difference between 2133 MHz to 2400 MHz with DirectX 12, which is something very different to what we see in Hitman 2016 running DirectX 12 at ultra settings. The pattern here is very, very, very clear and reinforces what we just said a moment ago. 2133 MHz is ultimately what is going to hinder you the most. The tweaks in the caching system of the Ryzen 2000 series has certainly improved things quite a bit. And with the intercore bandwidth improvements as well, there is certainly benefit to be had at running your memory over 3000 MHz. Do not get me wrong. But providing you're running your memory at around the 3000 MHz range, you can feel relatively confident that your memory isn't holding you back that much. Ashes of the Singularity is perhaps one of the more infamous CPU and GPU benchmarks out there, and of course was also one of the examples of DirectX 12 back in the day, the flagship if you will. While the number of GPU batches doesn't increase that much, between the different memory speeds, the CPU batches and CPU performance, the CPU frame rate does. With almost 30% difference in CPU batches between 2133 MHz and 3266 MHz. You also have to remember that in this case we've uh, limited those RAM timings to being identical. So if you have an older memory kit which has, say, inferior memory timings, then the performance difference here is going to be even greater. And with 20% CPU performance difference between the slowest memory and 2800 MHz, the results in this particular benchmark are fairly startling.
The last couple of results are from 3D Mark. We'll start out with Fire Strike. This is just re regular vanilla Fire Strike. And we have a 600 point ish difference in combined score from the slowest memory result up to the fastest memory result. And we'll finish off the results with Time Spy Extreme. This particular benchmark really hammers the graphics card, of course. Nevertheless, there is around 130 ish point difference in the CPU score. And the graphics score, uh, graphics score has a 50 point difference. So what's the key takeaway here then? Well, certainly memory speeds do still have a large impact in the Ryzen 2000 series processors. This is despite the various improvements that AMD have managed to wrangle into the chip, including but not limited to improvements in uh, the memory controller, the improvements to intercore bandwidth, uh, re reduction in latency for the caches, and so on and so on. But with that said, if you do manage to get your memory around the 2800 MHz or 3000 MHz range, then certainly you're not limiting yourself very often in games, if you are of course running into GPU bound scenarios. If though you're doing more synthetic testing, or perhaps even you're, for example, doing a lot of 3D rendering, video editing, then certainly faster memory speeds can certainly help matters, and we'll investigate that further in the next several days. With that said, Definitely the 400 series motherboards and the Ryzen 2000 series processors have a very welcome improvement in the compatibility of memory. With the 300 series boards, we had a bugger of a time at, uh, in some instances getting certain memory uh, modules running over, let's say, the mid-2000 megahertz it would just plumb not boot. In fact, we had one board until numerous BIOS updates that just point blank refused to go over 2400 megahertz. Fortunately, the vendor did eventually release, I guess, updates with the BIOS and that did improve things somewhat. But even so, it was somewhat hit and miss and it did depend as well on memory manufacturers and it just wasn't a brilliant situation. And I'm very glad that AMD have rectified it with the uh, 2000 series processors. So, Generally speaking, I would say the following. If you do have a fairly decent memory kit right now, let's say capable of the 2800, 3000 megahertz range, then you're probably not going to be super held back. That's not to say that you wouldn't be better served to get faster memory, but memory prices are still pretty damn high at the moment. So if you need to save up for a couple of months to get that X speed kit like 3200 megahertz or whatever, then so be it. But if you are running a really slow memory kit, for example, 2400 megahertz or uh, even slower in the short term, because let's say you found a really good deal on the Ryzen 2700X and you didn't have quite the funds right now to get, let's say, a 32 gigabyte or a 16 gigabyte uh, memory set, which is uh, faster than what you've currently got then just know that I would highly advise you to at least tweak the settings the best you can, reduce latencies the best you can, and of course overclock the memory if you if you need to. Put a little more voltage into the memory. Uh, I'm not saying that you should do that, as in like, you know, if it breaks, not my fault, but I'm just saying ideally you would certainly do that. And try to mitigate the problems as much as possible. Uh, just to echo what I'd said earlier on in this very video, the testing here is pretty much the best case scenario because the memory speeds that we're testing, 2133 to let's say 2800, have exactly identical memory timings. So if you are using a memory kit which has, let's say, slower clock speeds and worse memory timings, then the problems are only going to be further exacerbated. With that said, it's not necessarily a make or break situation. If you are gaming, Typically, the GTX 1080 or the Vega or whatever graphics card is naturally going to be the limiting factor. After all, unless you're playing a competitive game, in which case you're probably going to be willing to turn down the graphical settings a little bit, generally speaking, you're going to be GPU limited. It's going to be resolution or other options you're running graphically, which are going to slow down your gameplay, not necessarily the speed the CPU can pump out frames per second. Of course, if you are plonking down several hundred dollars or pounds or whatever your currency of choice is on a new system, then buying a faster memory kit is certainly important. I just wouldn't necessarily say that you need to pay exorbitant amounts of money to get uh, the fastest memory kit available. I would say that 
assuming you don't get a really good deal and if you're not made of money getting a memory kit of around the 3000 to let's say the 3400 ish megahertz is certainly going to be absolutely fine for you of course there are best case scenarios but i'm just here to advise you in my personal opinion as long as you're not running memory really slow like under the, say the 2400 megahertz 2800 megahertz would be kind of borderline you're probably going to be okay in most games and once again memory speeds do obviously have an impact even on single thread performance or dx 11 games older games so just keep that in mind with all of that said hopefully you have enjoyed the video normal stuff like share comment and subscribe there'll be a lot more uh videos like this over the next several days coming up on the channel um so yeah hopefully you will also ring that bell icon with all that said bye for now and take care of yourselves